welcome back to chemistry cc for you in the next video of the day we are going to do some of the objective questions from d block elements this d block elements is very important part for every exam beginning from the 12th 12th standard level uh, and so it is a vast area also we will be connecting it uh, along with coordination chemistry and we will be doing all the questions from this part uh, today i have taken certain basic level questions to begin with uh, but we will be continuing with this in the next part of the video as well. So let's begin with the first question. Transition elements have. First option is completely filled D, D levels. Not correct. Completely filled D and S levels. It is having completely filled S levels but not D. So that is also wrong. Incompletely filled D and completely filled D. That is wrong because uh, both are uh, what... Uh, it can it cannot both be incompletely and completely filled so the answer is option d incompletely filled d levels that transition elements have incompletely filled d levels and as the uh, transition elements move from one uh, left to right one one electron get filled in the d level that is transition elements now the second question is which one one of the following is the lightest transition elements so, uh, scandium is the first among the transition element and therefore it is the lightest uh, transition element. Uh, as, as we move, uh, bigger atomic, atomic number increases according to the, uh, uh, and therefore the weight also, the mass also will be increasing. Let's move to the third question here. The metal ion which do not form colored complex is. So, chromium, we know potassium dichromate is there, which is a colored complex. Manganese, we have um, potassium permanganate, which is also a colored complex. Uh, and such, iron is also having colored complexes. So, definitely our answer would be option B, zinc. Why? Because it is having many reasons. Zinc has the uh, electronic configuration D10S2, that is 3D10S4S2. So even if it loses two electrons also, it is having a D10 configuration which where further excitation or DD transition is not possible. And therefore most which do not and it is having a fully filled, um, fully filled uh, stable state. So it will not form any colored complex. So option B would be the right answer. Now we have the fourth question here. The fourth question is, which of the following has the power to be an oxidizing agent? This is not from D block. Actually, a, a question came from F block as well. Uh, I didn't uh, remove it because this is a simple question. The answer is cerium 4 plus. Why it is an oxidizing agent? Because C4 plus, plus can, convert, can be converted to C3 plus. Oxidizing agent is something which can be reduced. So, since this conversion is very simple, Therefore, uh, it is a good, good. Uh, it is having a power to become good oxidizing agent. The fifth question is which transition metal is known as wonder metal? So these kinds of questions are usually asked in CUSAT, CUSET, and BITSAT uh, degree level examination. Uh, even for all degree level examination and PG level exam of CUSAT and CUSET also, these kinds of questions, factual questions, usually come. So you should just remember this, which transition metal is known as wonder metal, it is titanium. And the reason is that titanium is having extremely high tensile strength. And even after high tensile strength and uh, tensile strength, it is considered as one of the lightest element. So titanium is known as wonder, uh, wonder metal. Okay, now we will go to the sixth question. Next question is maximum oxidation state is shown by maximum here means highest oxidation state is shown by which one of the following can show the highest of the oxidation state most of us would think it is manganese because it can show up to plus 7 oxidation state but it is wrong because osmium is the answer because osmium can show plus 8 oxidation state as well so among these the maximum is shown by osmium uh, followed by that it will be manganese would be there because it can show even plus 7 oxidation state among these. Okay. Now the seventh question. Which one of the following impart color to an aqueous solution? So when these kinds of questions come, you have to check for the D electron. How many D electrons are present? So let us consider. Titanium is having D4S, uh, sorry D2S2. And when it is Ti plus 4, there will be no D electrons. D0 it would be. In case of copper, copper is D10S1. 
and uh, Cu plus will be D10 alone. So it is completely filled. Next we are having Zn2 plus. Zn2 plus is also D10. So it is also completely filled. So only the transition. Color is usually because of electron transition in DD or DD transition. So among these titanium Cu plus and Zn2 plus definitely cannot be the answer. So our answer would be chromium. So what is the configuration of chromium? Chromium is D5S1. So Cr3 plus would be D3. Okay, one is gone and again two would be gone. So D3. So this is having uh, this possibility of DD transition and therefore it will be imparting color to an aqua solution. Next question is uh, the highest magnetic moment will be shown by. So the spin only magnetic moment the equation would be n into n plus 2 where n is the number of unpaired electrons. Unpaired electron. So the maximum number of unpaired electron among these which one would be having that would be having the highest magnetic moment. So let's see. Type scandium is D1. So one no, only one unpaired electron. D1 S2. S we do not need to consider because it is already paired. One unpaired electron will be here. Here nickel it would be D8. So if we are filling. We will be having 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 2 unpaired electron. In case of iron it is D6. 6 means 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 4 unpaired electron in iron. And in cobalt it is D9 which is don't mind my drawing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8 and 9. So only one unpaired electron. So out of this largest number of unpaired electrons are for iron. So it will be showing the highest magnetic moment because it is having n equal to 4. Now the next question. Which of the following transition metal is used as a catalyst? Uh, transition metals are uh, extremely uh, good uh, having a great application which is the use as a catalyst. And we have already seen all these three are used for uh, catalysis purposes so uh, all of these would be the answer both nickel platinum and cobalt all the three are good catalyst and all of these would be the answer now the tenth question which one of the following is obtained when auric chloride reacts with sodium chloride the answer is option d naucl4 you all know about this and the complex aucl4 minus is very famous so you should you should all be well known about this NaAuCl4 is the complex that is formed when auric chloride reacts with sodium chloride. Now here we have we are given a set of a different sets of two elements and we have to find which of the elements cannot form an alloy. Zinc and copper definitely form an alloy. Iron and car carbon also form alloy and as uh, Sodium uh, mercury amalgam is also very famous. So the answer is option B. For some reason we never see a, uh, an amalgam formation between these two. So uh, this is the answer. Uh, that is uh, iron and mercury do not form a alloy. The next question is the basic character of the transition metal monoxides follow the order. So titanium from titanium to iron uh, the transition metals are given uh, and we are asked to find the basic character. So as the electropositivity according to the electropositivity there will be increased basicity. Okay. So we know that the electron negativity will be increasing from left to right. Also the electropositive metal will be in the right side. So our answer would be titanium oxide greater than vanadium oxide greater than chromium oxide than iron that is FeO. So this is, this is the order as we go, go like this the basicity would be decreasing or the basicity increases in this order. Basicity increases decreases in this order titanium uh, scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron okay it goes like that so the basicity decreases in that order or it will be highest when it is in the left side that is the order now the next question is the highest possible oxidation state shown by osmium in its compounds is we have already discussed this the answer is option b 
plus 8. Plus 8 oxidation state is shown by osmium in its compound. And we have already compared it within one of the following before the questions in the previous uh, set, uh, previous part. So definitely osmium and its plus 8 oxidation state is one of the prominent question in the examination. Some of the questions that we have discussed right now has been asked in uh, entrances previously. So it is very important. Now the next question, which of the following transition metals do, does not show variable oxidation state? Again, zinc is the answer and the reason remains the same. Why? Because zinc is having the configuration uh, D10S2 and as a result, uh, zinc will not show variable oxidation state. Even if it loses 2 electron, it will be having a D10 configuration. And the excitation energy is very high to excite, excitation energy is very high very high so in order to obtain an, any other uh, variable oxidation state so plus 2 would be the oxidation state of zinc and it will not show any variable oxidation state now finally we have the question melting point of zinc cadmium and mercury are relatively low because hey, again the electronic configuration is d10 s2 for all the three of these and therefore their electrons do not participate in the metallic bonding and that is why their melting point is relatively low comparing to others they are having a very low uh, melting point because their electrons do not participate in metallic bonding and the reason for that is the very stable field oxidation uh, field electronic configuration of these three elements now, uh, as I have already said, these questions are very important because D block is one of the very, very important topic in inorganic chemistry and for every exam this is important. So, we will be continuing with D block elements. I know I have already started spectroscopy. I will be continuing with both these topics in the uh, coming series also and I will be trying to do uh, the QSET part A today itself. If not today, tomorrow morning itself that whole video would be uploaded. Uh, so don't worry and other entrance examinations also we will be continuing with all those very very soon. Um, thank you so much for watching. Like our videos and uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon for latest notification. Thank you so much and all the best for all of you.